Hello, world. What's up, everybody? Come on, guys. This is Dave from the Fight Bananas Podcast. How's everyone doing? All right, all right, all right. What a week in MMA, like almost every week nowadays. UFC 242 in the books. Habib defends the lightweight championship, beats Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Just an unbelievable uh, performance by Habib. So much more to talk into that. We got the finally that uh, breaking news of Jorge Mazadov versus uh, Diaz MSG. Uh, we talked about it on the last podcast. We said the news was going to break, and boom. It was like hours, minutes, seconds later the news broke. That was tremendous. The fight every mixed martial arts fan wants to see. The BMF, Mazadov, Diaz, MSG, NYC, fantasy, mixed martial art fan, heaven. Also this weekend, guys, we got Gaethje and uh, Cowboy Cerrone. We'll talk about that. But first, we're going to get him on the line right now. Chase Batwell, 1-0 pro, one of the best uh, amateur fighters in the last two years down here in the southeast. Turned pro at Island Fights 58, 1-0, gets a rear naked choke in round one. But now he's going to make his fight announcement. Where is he going to go 2-0? And we cannot wait. Chase Batwell is coming on the line. But before we talk to Chase, we want to thank two sponsors real quick. Warhammerfightwear.com. Been talking about these guys for a while, and I will not stop. I love them. They're great. The merchandise is, the price is fair. The material is fantastic. I wear the tees all the time. I cannot wait. Warhammerfightwear.com. Warhammerfightwear.com. Check them out on Instagram and Facebook. Like their page. That's my fans. That's my guys. Warhammer Fightwear. Also, and still nutrition, and still nutrition.com on Instagram, the real and still. But check out the walkout. This is the stuff I'm starting to use. I use the, uh, the joint stuff still to this day. They're little, cow, uh, little pills I take every morning. But now I'm starting to do the uh, walkout, the powder. I kind of make it into a shake, add a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Every fighter, everyone can use it. They can put their own, uh, you know, just to it. I know Michael Beast Boy Davis puts it in his pancakes with bananas. You guys can do whatever you want, but check it out. Make sure you purchase on nstillnutrition.com. All right, guys, let's go bananas with Chase Batwell. All right, guys, here we go. Chase Batwell on the line. Wow, checking in with us at American Top Team right now. You're at the gym? Yeah, yeah, man. The grind. Thank you session in. Yeah. Uh, at like nine fifteen or nine twenty or something like that. Yes, sir. The grind never stops, my man. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we were there live. Island fights fifty eight. Your professional debut probably went um, everything you wanted. One and zero. Oh, rear naked choke. First round. Uh, this first. Let's hit on that. Let's put a bow on Island fights fifty eight for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, repeat the question one more time. I didn't hear the truth again. No, just uh, how did you feel about your performance? Were you just, uh, you know? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the big thing coming in uh, as an amateur, I just, I never got a lot of finishes. Um, I had a lot of, uh, like, three submissions, but the rest of them were all decisions. And as a pro, I, I just told myself, you know, to make the transition, like, I'm going to finish, guys. So whether I'm striking with you or I'm, I'm grappling, like, everything has an end, and I'm trying to get to the end, whether, you know, wherever it is. And that's, that's how I felt. You know, I felt good. I didn't want to strike with uh, him specifically just because he was a wild guy, and those are the hardest ones for me personally to strike with. So uh, after I felt him out a little bit, I was like, nah, we're just going to take this dude to the ground and, and you know, it went exactly how I wanted after that. Man, I love that, man. Uh, you said something that just, psh, lightning bulb to me. N. Dean Tool loves ends. Uh, the fans love ends. Dana White, the man himself, he loves ends. He loves finishes. So I love that you have that mindset going into a fight that, you know, winning is, uh, you know, it is great. We'll talk about Habib in a second, 28 no. So you need yeah. to win 100%. But if you get finishes, it, especially being a you know professional, your debut, 1-0, going to be 2-0 soon. We'll talk about that in a split second. Uh, finishes yeah, sure. is a way to go, man. Uh, I love your mindset. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that uh, separates every pro. Uh, you know, whether whoever you're fighting doesn't matter. Like, you know, you, know, you got to find what their weakness is, and you got to exploit. It's not just fighting for me. Uh, I'm not just going there and you know, angry. Like, I'm never angry for a fight. I'm never really 
fighting in a sense to the common person what their definition of fighting is mm -hmm. it's more like an equation you know like a a, a human equation that you just got to figure out you know, some are tougher than others some some require different formulas and stuff but you know it's 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 just i'm trying to get to the finish now that's how my mindset works wow man 20 years old chase i'm loving it i'm loving your 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 mindset to the game. I'm loving your mindset to trying to finish. Uh, wow. Huge prospect. Um, okay, let's get into it. Um, we talked about it a little bit last weekend, and now we can kind of finally put it out there. Uh, what are you doing uh, yep. October 10th? What's going on? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be uh, I'm fighting Island Fights uh, in Columbus, Georgia, you know, two hours from my uh, hometown. So I'm excited about that. Um, 135 again. Uh, I think I'll be there for a while. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting too big right now, but, uh, yeah, man, just looking for another fight, looking for another finish. And that's that. Very cool. Very cool. For one, um, what draws you to Island fights? Uh, one and oh there, Island fight 58. This is Island fight 60. I don't know if you've seen the card or heard it. Oh my goodness. Humongous I've, card. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen a couple of the fights that got released. Uh, yeah. I think, there's only is it two or just one right now? I think there. I think I saw two. The the title fight, the middleweight. I want to see that one. I watched the the. There's a little promo video I saw. I don't know whose page it was on or, or anything. Yeah, like Kilburn, that, uh, Kilburn and Ross, guys. right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a fight. Askar, Askar on the main yeah. event. We got the heavyweight uh, co-main event. We got uh, Chris Beast Boy Barnett. That man's a legend in oh. the sport. Uh, sport. Oh. He's gonna fight Rashawn Jackson at a Fusion XL Performance Center, which just put in Phil Road in the UFC. Mike Platinum Perry, Jacare Souza. The card is stacked, and between yeah. you and me, and no one's listening. So this is just a secret between you and me. I know a fight that's on that card that's gonna blow everyone's mind. It could be the best fight ever that's not been in the UFC or like Bellator or PFL. You know, one of those what? things. It's it's insane, that's Chase. Crazy. It is, man. So it's it's great well, to have I'm, you on that card. Yeah, um, I'm 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 very uh, honored to be on the card and, and Island Fights. I really love the promotion, man. Uh, I fell in love with it last time. I you know, well, you, know, you guys keep everything very professional. And, you know, I'm, this is my first pro fight, but as an amateur, you know, I fought in a couple of different organizations, and you know, sometimes it's just like, man, I don't even want to be here right now because it's so unorganized. But you got you know, Island Fights. You know, I love it. I love the, the the days before how you treat us. Um, the way you treat us at weigh-ins is a big thing. A lot of people don't care about weigh-ins, but you guys take the time to, to get all the, um, the stuff that, you know, the banner to put behind it, you know, the whole big show of it. You know, I love that portion. And also, uh, uh the day of, I, li I like fighting in a ring better than the cage. It's just cooler to me. Yeah. Um, it changes the game a little bit, you it know, does. like when you're against the cage, you, you can do certain things you usually can't do. Um, you know, your arms don't get trapped against the cage or the ropes. You can, you can still work when you got a body lock and stuff like that. Um, and also, I, I like Pride. Um, my dad, when he first started watching MMA, it was it was in Pride. You know, that's a ring. And so I've always wanted to fight in a ring, and that was the first time we got an MMA fight in a ring. Yeah, so that was cool. It's pretty epic. It's it's different. It's uh, Island Fights is unique. Uh, one reason yeah. because of the ring. It is. It's like this. It feels just like a big. Uh, main event feel every fight. It's like holy crap! Yeah. It just it feels big. Exactly. It makes it bigger, that's man. A, and that's talking the about way to put it. Oh, you know, that's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then talking about it, man, two hours away, a Georgia boy. This thing is in Columbus, Georgia at the Civic Center. And I've told that this is one of the best, um, you know, arenas, uh, venues in the Southeast. I heard it's just spectacular. I cannot wait to get there myself to Columbus, Georgia. Uh, just talk about that, fighting two hours away from your home, fighting in Georgia. I know you're training your tail off there in Coconut Creek, Miami, getting the, yeah. you know, getting the sun, getting the 98-degree uh, yeah. weather every day. But <laughs> Island Fight 60, Columbus, Georgia, Thursday night, man. I can Talk to me about uh, just fighting in your home state. Oh man, it's gonna be great. Uh, anytime I get a fight close to home, my, my gym, they always come out. You know, I, I actually uh, I moved from Tennessee to Georgia, so um, it was just me and my parents and uh, my sister. But she eventually went back to Tennessee. But it was just us three, man. And so for like four years, the only family I had was the family I had at the gym. So, you know, every day after school, you know, I see my parents, and I go see my second family at the gym. And uh, you know, whenever I see them, when I'm when they're at my fight, man, it just energizes me because uh, you know I just know those are my people. You know, they love me. So getting to fight in front of them is, you know, I'm, in a sense, like, I'm ready to die. Like, I don't care. Yeah, I'm putting it all on the line. So, you know, they're going to be there. So I'm, I'm going to show up. Wow. Wow. I cannot wait. Uh, that is October 10th, 
Thursday night uh, live in Columbus, Georgia. Also, of course, you can watch it on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, on the line, we're with our main man, Chase Batwell. Check him out on Instagram, guys. Chase underscore Batwell underscore MMA. Easy enough, right? That's easy enough. Uh, give him a follow. All right, man. There's a couple things in the MMA world, especially UFC. There's just three huge things, and I'm just a fan of it, and I just uh, would love your aspect, your two cents on it. First, Habib versus Dustin. Uh, Habib now is 28-0. The lightweight king. Is he the pound for pound king? Just, uh, you know, I would love your take on Habib Nurmagomedov. Yeah, yeah. First off, you know, before I say anything, you know, I was pulling for Dustin. I was really hoping he'd pull it out. But, man, you know, you can't really complain. The guy he's fighting is just a light years, you know, in, in, a, in the style of wrestling that he has, like the European freestyle. You know, it's different. Like, America, you could tell when somebody's an American wrestler and you could tell when somebody's a European wrestler. Just because the American wrestler is going to shoot, you know, blast doubles, singles, and stuff like that. Could be, he's so good in the in the in the body lock against the cage that it's just crazy, you know. But he earns everything he gets, and man, he he is the pound for pound. Like, how can you even take that away from? Him? He's finished everybody he's fought besides, you know, Ally Quinta and uh, you know, a couple others. But in my opinion, you know, those guys didn't have a chance at all, you know. So he he's the he's the king, you know. He pound for pound, he's the king, no doubt. And it's crazy. Everyone keeps on talking about that Rage and Al fight. And I kind of got into a debate with some of the people here. He, Habib, <laughs> got that fight. Everyone's like, oh, Rage and Al only had, you know, two days or 24 hours on that fight. For one, Rage and Al was on that card. So he was cutting weight. His mind was ready. And then, then yeah. if, if I could say in a weird way, if I give you just a $50,000 right now, that gets you more excited. That gets you more pumped. You're going to do more. Rage yeah. and Al got the bump. Rage and Al got the pay bump, the opportunity bump. He he got everything went his way. If you're Habib yeah. and you're trying to fight Tony now for the fourth time and it's like, you know, this biggest fight ever, you're going for the title and then Tony gets hurt. It's deflating. And then there's rumors yeah. of Showtime. Oh, I'm, my, my fault. Max Holloway. So now the Max Holloway fight comes along and you're like, oh, wow, this is still a big fight. And, you know, he's he's into it. You know, two days, three days, about the weight, he gets out. Then there's the rumors of Anthony Showtime Pettis, which I love, a huge name in the sport. And then that falls through. Habib went through three top ten fighters of all time. He went through this deflation and then raging out, who is a stud. You know, he is a great fighter. It's like I gave I give Habib more credit on that win than almost any of the other wins. And it's crazy to me that people give him a negative on yeah. that performance. Yeah, man, I, I agree with you totally. Uh, if anybody who's ever fought, you know, and had an opponent on their mind, whenever the, you know, if a promoter calls you and says, hey, man, we got an opponent change, that's a big deal, especially if it happens three times. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it changes your mental. Because you're like, man, I don't even know if this fight's going to happen. I don't even know if I'm going to fight. And so it, it just changes, you know, from one gear turn into like three gears turning in your head. And that's just like three separate places you got to put your energy, you know, besides just one person, one fight, one night. People don't realize it, but just that mindset is just totally different. Hundred percent, man. You know, my wife calls me. It's like, hey, we're going to dinner. I'm going to pick it up for you, babe. All right, I'm I'm <laughs> driving here. Then she calls me. No, no, yeah. no, go to a different place. No, 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 go to a different place. Right. After two, I'm like, exactly. I'm done with exactly. dinner, babe. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. All right. So that's the Habib. We'll put a bow on that. Um, my friend, your friend. Uh, he, I, he's the greatest mixed martial artist in the Bananas book. We love him here. Jorge Mazadov gets the oh, main yeah. event on Madison Square Garden versus Diaz for the BMF belt. This is this fight could it's just it's humongous. It's growing actually by the minute. Just the um, anticipation. So when that fight broke, yeah. what was your first um, you know take on that fight? I'm not missing it. <laughs> not for anything. <laughs> you know, imagine yeah. that should be everybody's response. Yes, that's gonna be. I'm honestly, man, like, I don't know a bigger fight. Like, I mean, I'm saying that, but it probably is. But to me, like, right now, there's not a bigger fight out there. There's not one. No. Like, UFC, hot right now. They're, they're printing money. It's like here, everyone yeah. should just walk up to the UFC headquarters, give them $60, and say thank you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, you're training. You s- yeah, it is. It is. And you see Jorge all the time, right? Uh yeah yeah we're on different schedules just because he's a different weight class the way sure. it works out most of the time sure but I have seen him train before um, and it was cool one day I got to see him and Dustin Poirier just training not together but with two two guys in, in a separate room and it was just them with their with their partners 
And I was like, man, this is better than the UFC. I get to see, you know, the rounds that they're putting in the gym. You know, it's so cool. I know. I just stayed and watched their whole training session, man. Uh, it's my favorite. I've been down there. I, you know, I talked to you uh, a couple times about it. Every time I can get down there to ATT, I do. Uh, I go with my main man, Mike Beast Boy Davis, and just kind of watch him. Yep. And it's, it's, you know, I pay three hundred bucks, or the fans pay three five hundred bucks to go to the UFC, and they see eight ten fights, and you know they have a couple prelims. Yeah. When you go down to ATT, you see Junior Dos Santos banging people in the cage. You see Barbosa working yeah. with someone. You see the greatest mixed martial artists in the world all together in a four hour period, and they just like you said with the schedules. Uh, you know, they come in, out, in, out. Arlovsky trains at night, yep. and Kayla Harrison's here. It's just, it's incredible. It's the greatest gym in the world. I just, you can't put a, it's insane. It really is. Yeah, it's it's really, man, you can't, you can't describe it. If you're a fight fan and you haven't been here yet, then you wouldn't know. <laughs> um, all right, the last UFC uh, topic, and then we'll, I got 10 funny questions for you, my man, so uh, the fans can, like, cool, cool. connect with you, and, uh, you know, I know you got to go to training. Uh, this weekend, Saturday, UFC Vancouver, ESPN Plus, Justin Gaethje versus Dad, I call him Dad Cow- uh, Cerrone, said a <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's that same thing. It's a fighter's dreams fight. Who's winning versus yeah, Gaethje versus Cowboy? See, man, it's a tough one because I haven't seen a lot of people leg kick Cerrone, so I don't know who's going to win. But it's going to be interesting just because of the styles, man. You know, Gaethje's going to he's going to put his guard up. He's going to walk forward. He's going to hit the leg kick. He's going to look for the counter. And Cerrone, I don't – man, I just can't call it because he doesn't fight as good going back as he does going forward. Mm. Um so I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a tough one to call. But I, I, I hope uh, Cerrone pulls it out because I'm a big fan of his. And I, I fought on his, uh, his amateur promotion. So yeah, I'm hoping for him. Okay. Okay. So one vote, uh, Cerrone. Uh, I'm going for Justin Gaethje. I'm a, just a huge fan. The highlight reel, All-American. I'm all about it. Just He's a uh, must-see. I feel you, man. Must-see. You know, it's like, yeah, Saturday night I'll be yeah. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Chase Bowell, here we go. We got 10 fun questions for you. First thing off the top of your head, then we'll let you go. Keep on training. We want to uh, see you win sure, at sure. Island Fight 60, uh, October 10th, Columbus, Georgia, live on UFC Fight Pass. All right, uh, first one. Who was your first celebrity crush? Taylor Swift. Your least favorite sparring partner? <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, I don't have one right now. They're all pretty cool, actually. There's always someone that goes in extra two seconds. There's always someone that does the eye poke. There's always that guy. <laughs> I, I tell you, you're my least favorite. Uh, the guys who are just that good, uh, every time I go to Juan Porta, he always takes my back every <laughs> single time. <laughs> So, okay. Uh, he's not a bad partner. He's just really good. Yeah. So he's my least favorite. You know, my favorite and my least favorite. He's gonna beat me up for sure. Hey, that's the way you get better. Um, yeah. Chase Boutwell becomes twenty and zero. Your dream fight? Where is it? Who is it? And what is it for? Man, it'd be it'd be in Macon, Georgia. You know, I know it'd never be in Macon, but probably more like Atlanta or something like that. But uh, man, I don't know. Any uh, maybe Sean O'Malley for the one thirty five UFC belt. That'd be a cool fight. Ooh, that would be. I like that. I haven't heard that one before. Um, yeah. What was the last book you've read? <laughs> Man, I don't even remember. Last time I read a book, right? It's uh, like fourth grade, right? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> in Georgia we don't read we the picture books. <laughs> But, uh, oh, shit. um, man, the last one I remember. Oh, I remember, um, it's the one everybody reads in high school. Uh, to, to Kill a Mockingbird. That's Kill- the last one I actually read. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's a all timer for sure. Uh, what yeah. is your favorite app? Um, probably YouTube because I get on there and watch so many videos, but aside from YouTube, it would be Instagram. Oh, for sure. And then if you're on YouTube, of course you're watching uh, Fight Bananas, and you definitely subscribe to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely watching Fight Bananas. That's the only thing I watch on YouTube. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your favorite clothing brand? Oh, man. Man, you know what? I don't even have one. I just I just wear whatever. But if I had to have one, it would probably be a Fight Brand. Um, hmm. I really like uh, uh, Bad Boy. They're uh, okay. They're not not the tight shorts, but the loose ones. Those feel good. Uh, like um, like board shorts. But I'm not really a fan of their tight shorts. Those are too tight. <laughs> um, who's your all time favorite combat sports fighter? Man, all time. Yes, sir. 
probably George St. Pierre. But if you're talking about like overall, but right now I really like Israel Adesanya. I think he's light years ahead of striking. He just understands it more than anybody. But uh, GSP or uh, Adesanya for sure. Two good ones. Uh, so with that being your favorite, you have uh, Israel defeating Whitaker next month. You know, man, I, I hope he does. But it's still, man, they're both champions, and, and Robert's dangerous. So it, it's hard to tell. You know, I heard somebody say it's footwork versus technique. So Robert's footwork versus uh, Israel's technique. Oh, that's a good way. Uh, to I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way. Uh, two more, my man. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, I can hear somebody chew. I hate that. <laughs> Last and uh, certainly not least, uh, your fight prediction for October 10th, Island Fight 60, Columbus, Georgia. It's just not going the distance. Mm. That's the only prediction. Mm. Not going the distance. I love it. I love it. Chase, man, great interview. We appreciate your time. We cannot wait. We'll see you. I will definitely be there. Columbus, Georgia, we're coming up there in October. UFC Fight Pass. Follow my main man, Chase underscore Batwell underscore MMA on Instagram. Chase, have a great day. Talk to you. Thanks, man. Glad, glad you, uh, you had me. Yes, have sir. Have a good day. All right. All right, guys, here we go. Final thoughts, UFC 242. I talked to Chase Batwell about it. I've been doing a lot of thinking about it. I've talked to probably a handful, five, ten fighters over the weekend. This just sit on the Habib Nurmagomedov goat talk. It's just, can we just put it on the shelf? Can we, can we plant it and then water it? Can we talk about it? Can we think about it? Can we just let it grow? Let's not forget GSP. Let's not forget Anderson the Spider Silva. Let's not forget John Jones, the greatest light heavyweight, defeats the greatest heavyweight ever. He has went through the division not once but twice. John Jones. I know some people might not like him personally. Some people might not like him outside the octagon. But we're talking the GOAT fighter of all time, guys. Jordan have done crazy things outside the NBA arena. Tom Brady has got suspended before. John Jones inside that octagon right now and maybe forever is the GOAT. Habib is great. Arguably, probably now you can't argue against it, the greatest lightweight UFC fighter of all time. Defeated Conor McGregor. Destroyed Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Went through RDA. He's done it all, guys. Raging out. Edson Barbosa yelling at him. Habib Nurmagomedov is a bear. He's unstoppable right now. He says he wants two more fights. He wants 29 and he wants 30 and 0. I'm praying to the MMA gods, to the UFC gods. It's Tony Ferguson at 29, and if he gets through him, it to. Put the bow on his career. It has to be Conor the Notorious McGregor. It has to. Let's see if Habib goes down as the best ever. Let's see. Let's put it on the shelf. And let's water it. Let's think about it. Let's talk about it. Let's see what John Jones does late this year, early next year. Does he go to heavyweight? What happened if he defeats Stipe Miocic? And he's not the greatest light heavyweight ever. He's the greatest heavyweight ever. Let's just put it on this shelf. 
Guys, thank you so much for listening. Fight Bananas Official on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to Fight Bananas on YouTube. Every podcast, we have YouTube exclusive interviews. We have YouTube exclusive hype videos. We have content galore and content is king. Guys, have a great day. Stay blessed. We'll talk to you soon.